Praise God. Welcome to the House of Prayer online ministry. I am one of your pastors, Patricia Harris, out of Michigan. We thank God for the other pastor, Apostle John Williams, out of Fugleville, Texas. We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we thank God for the opportunity to minister to you one more time in this fashion. Today, we're going to be talking about going through the storm. Everybody has been through something. Everybody's either going through a storm, you're in a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. But rest assured, we all have some kind of storm going on either in our life now, we're going through it, we're coming out of one, or we're beginning one. So today we're going to talk about that. That's our topic today, going through the storm. We're going to be coming from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, um, verse 6. Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 6. Let us pray. Our God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you, God, for one more chance, one more day to lift up the name of Jesus, one more day to ask that you forgive us for our sins, one more day to allow us to live so that you are pleased and that you are glorified in the things that we say, the way we live, the way we move and have our being. We're here, God, and for no shape, form, or fashion, solely to lift up your name so that you are glorified. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you. Amen. Going through the storm. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6 says as follows. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not. Fear not. Not be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God. He it is that do go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. We're going to read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that do go with thee. So he letting you know, I'm in the storm with you. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. God is the only one that can tell you he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He is everywhere. When you get up in the morning, God is there with you. When you go to school, God is there with you. When you go to work, God is there with you. When you're riding in the car and no one else is about and it's just you and God, God is still with you. The last thing anybody want to hear when you're going through the storm um, um, is I, I know what you're going through. Very few of us want to hear that. Let's be honest. I know what you're going through. I've been there. I understand. Nobody's situation is the same. You may be a single mom. You may be a married woman or a married man that's going through. No situation is the same because even identical twins are different in some fashion. You know, they have a lot of things that they do alike, but they're different in some manners. And so the last thing that you want to hear is, I understand. I got you. You know, because at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, when you want to call that person and say, I got you, are they willing to answer the phone? When you need somebody to talk to or somebody to cry, are they willing to just be quiet and listen? Sometimes you just want somebody to be quiet and listen. You don't want to hear, I understand. I know what you're going through. Because God is the only person that will say and mean it, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. As he said in the latter part of Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. But he tells us to be strong and of good courage while you're going through. Fear not. In other words, I got you. God is saying, fear not. Don't worry about it. Let me handle it. You know, there is no situation that you're going through that God cannot get you out of. Trust me. I'm a living witness. You know, I remember um, about less than a year ago when my husband got called in, uh, Dr. Uh, Danny Harris, the founder of the House Prayer Ministry, I remember sitting there and I remember when I uh, went to the hospital and I remember, you know, just looking around and it was like I was in a daze and I couldn't believe it because I'm like, Lord, here's this man. Me and him was just talking together, you know, less than 20 minutes ago. And here it is that they're coming to tell me that, you know, um, that's it, Miss Harris. And I remember looking at the nurses and, and I remember us just sitting there looking and we just all started crying and, you know, and I, I couldn't believe it. I never cried that hard in my entire life, even when we was going through the process and I was there ministering with him and I was there praying with him and I was there fasting. I never cried so hard, you know, and it was like a part of me was just stomped out. It was like a big hole, but I thank God because God said, I'm the only one that can never leave you nor forsake you. And God reminded me that at that altar, when I stood there in front of all those hundreds of people and, and those witnesses, and I said, you know, in sickness and in health, for better, for worse, 
till death do us part. You know, I said that. And a lot of us say that we're married and we think it's, you know, I said, <laughs> and we think it's funny. Well, I'm one that had to live through those vows that I said. But what I didn't do was blame God. I realized and understood in my son, he realized and understood that God didn't wrong us. You know, God wanted his best. And God chose Dr. Danny Harris for that time to send him on his next journey. You know, whatever that may be. You know, that's not for me to decide whether he made it into heaven or hell. That ain't my call. That's God's business. But I do know that the man that I had here on earth with me was a godly man and a God-fearing man and a man who loved the Lord and who did anything he could to help someone. So therefore, I had a great husband. So when the time came, God called him. I said, you know what, God? I can't be selfish. I had to repent. I couldn't be selfish and I had to come to myself. And when I did, I came here and I remember all the family. We all got together. And the greatest thing, I have a great family. I thank God for my family. We're not perfect, no. But I thank God we are there for one another and we need each other. You know, and that's my natural family. And I thank God for you, my spiritual family, for praying for us. You know, but when I was going through that situation, that, how, that storm in my life, I remember sitting down and I came in and my family all came over to our house and I remember we all just sat there, and the greatest thing that they did for me was nobody looked at me and said, I understand. I know what you're going through. I got you. Everybody just sat there quietly. We sat quietly. And we sat peacefully. And we looked around at each other. And we looked at pictures of Danny and the family. We thought about all the good times we had together. And I remind, I was reminded and I reminded my family that God said, I'm the only person that can never leave you nor forsake you. God's the only one. And he told us to be of good cheer, be of good courage. You know, fear, fear not. I got you. I know you in here. You know, I know you're going through this storm. I'm the one that put you there. And I put you there because I need to pull something out of you in order to mold and shape you and form you to what I need you to be for such a time as this. Because it's going to be a time where you're going to have to minister to somebody else that's going through. And I need you to be strong. And I need you to be able to tell them about a great man named Jesus who brought me through this storm when I was going through. Not to tell them I understand. Because you don't understand. It was only one Dr. Danny Harris. You know, and my sister, she lost her husband about six years ago. Uh, about four, about four or five years ago, you know, give or take a couple years, she never looked at me and said, I understand. I know what you're going through. And I appreciated that because her husband's name was Willie and my husband's name was Danny. And they were two different men, you know. So she wasn't looking at me going, you know, I understand because we wasn't going through the same thing. I have a 13-year-old child, you know, um, here, you know. And she, she doesn't have that in her situation. So she was really great to me. And I appreciated her and the love and support. My youngest sister was there for me. I appreciate and I thank God for her as well. You know, she didn't say nothing. She just sat there and just kind of ministered with me, you know, with silence and with prayer. The greatest word you can speak to somebody is a soft word, meaning nothing. Just to wait on the Lord to give you the time and tell you when it's time to move. And don't move on your own thinking you got it together. Or she going through, I need to go over there and minister to her. She's a single mom and her husband just left her. Now she's single. She was married. I need to go minister to her. You know, no, wait on the Lord to tell you when to go in the mood. And learn sometimes the best thing you do is just be quiet. God is the only person that can say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that's what he said. We have to learn how to know when to speak and when to be quiet. We've got to learn to know what to say and when to say it. And the greatest thing you can do when somebody's going through a storm, you know, or going through a situation is just wait on God to give you what to say. And don't be so quick to come and start saying, I understand. Because very few want to hear that. Little to none actually want to hear that. You know, sometimes the greatest thing you, you can do is just be there. And when you say, I got you, don't forget about the person. So many people told me that. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Whatever you need, whatever you need, whatever you and your son need, whatever you and your son need. And at the end of the day, it's been November 2015 when it happened. Um, November 15, 2015. And this is um, August the 30th, 2015. And I can tell you, the very, all those people mainly that said it, 95% of them has fell by the wayside. Because they're going through too. And I'm not mad at them. You know, I'm going to continue to pray for them and continue to lift them up in Jesus' name. But my family is still here with me. You know, and when I want to think about those good times, I think about them. But rest assured, the enemy didn't stop fighting me then. I had to go through the next storm. And I had to go through another storm. And I had to go through another storm. And so, therefore, when I was going through all those different storms, I, re I had to remind myself that God said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. I tell my sons that. I tell my nieces. I tell my family that. You know, I could say all day long, I got you. I'm going to be there for you. But one day, God's going to call us all in. 
So nobody can guarantee and say they're going to be there 100%. You know, that you can only say, I'll be there, you know, if the Lord not tarry, if the Lord should not tarry before the opportunity or Lord's will. You have to learn to say, Lord's will, I'll be there. If God shall say so, I'll be there. I'll be there to help you. But remind people that God is the only person that says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's the only one. Thank you, Jesus. He's the only one that can say that and mean it because God will not lie. He can't lie. He's God. You know, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he's just a great God. He's a comforter to you when you're going through the storm. You know, he's a way maker for you. When people say no, God will give you a yes. And I'd rather have a slow yes than a quick no. So it just behooves us to wait on the Lord and to know that he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Sure, you're going through right now. And just because they say, you know, you got this, you got that. Man don't have the last say, so God do. So when people tell you that, I thank you and I, I thank God for your, you know, your wisdom that you're telling me. But you just tell me what you know. But I know a man named Jesus who can do anything but fail. God bless you for the opportunity to minister to you in this fashion, Pastor Harris, and have a wonderful, godly day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus.